welcome to episode 140 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is April 20th, and together with Robert and Goran, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hi. So Hello. I would say Hello. next to AI, um, security is one of the most important topics in the discussions with my customers at the moment. Um, with the Microsoft Sentinel solution for SAP applications, we also have a pretty cool offering to help protect um, your SAP systems on Azure. It even got certified for Rise with SAP recently. So to give you an update on the latest news and also to show you some, some cool demos, we have a very good team here today. So we have um, Joaf and Yossi from the Sentinel product group here. We have Sebastian and Martin who actually were here also on the, on the show a few times and they have created some cool demos that they'll share with us with us um, today. But before we hand over to them, as always, let's start with a few news from this week. And the first one is, Goran, you brought this up, Azure Automation yeah. Support. Um, so uh, why would Azure Automation is an Azure Pass service, uh, quite used a lot. What it has to do with SAP, well, uh, maybe some of you would remember I was doing with Martin this presentation on uh, sub snoozing start and stop as well, yeah. uh, which use the PowerShell commandlets to do to stop the SAP system and manage and the VMs. The new stuff is basically they finally there we have a public preview of the PowerShell 7.2. Uh, okay, Python as well, I'm not using it here. But anyway, it's always, I love to go to the higher version of the PowerShell. So not just the default was 5.1, which is a bit older. Yes, it is supported with AZ modules and different stuff. However, I somehow uh, generally prefer the seven the, the the seven version as well. So that's already um, uh, that's already great. Yeah, to to okay. have it yeah, support. Um, the next stuff I'm really kind of interesting. Also, kind of um, if you can yeah, the GA availability um, Linux clients to access the Azure files over the SMB. I mean. <clears throat> For me, this news is just kind of interesting because in SAP context, um, there are customers who re require access to the file share um, um, sub MNT or maybe sub trans to the same file share from Windows and Linux. So one way of doing the stuff is for different reasons, right? One way of doing is that a file share could in parallel support both SMB and NFS, which is currently Azure file share is not doing it. Azure NetApp is doing it. However, there is other way around. So the Windows uh, uh, could access NFS through the Windows clients and Linux through the, could access SMB through the uh, SMB clients. And there is always, of course, question of authentication. So uh, this support uh, of Linux uh, using Linux client accessing Azure Fascia over the SMB Yes, and you do need some prerequisites to uh, hear like uh, active, uh, active the Azure Active uh, Directory or, or uh, Active Directory Domain Services as a prerequisite. I would say really does open a, 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 a pot new potentials. You know, I mean, this is mm -hmm. nothing yet still tested. It's a kind kind of new, actually, from yesterday, but uh, really exciting a bit to give us more flexibility to cover the different integration scenarios between the different SAP systems here. Yeah, so. Cool. And I think that's actually a nice segue to, to the next topic um, that I had found. So Marco Somo from, from SAP published a blog post on the cloud identity service offering um, for on the, on the trial version. So if you are um, using BTP, um, then so far that was always an issue that if you really wanted to use the identity service that you either had to use um, the free tier, I think, so where, where you need to uh, provide a credit card or whatever, or, or then really buy um, a license. But now um, the identity service is also available on trial, which means you can really use this one um, to, to set up your identity instance, um, which obviously, I think here, here, Martin, both Martin Pankratz, Martin Reple, um, blocked and and wrote a lot of things about how to use the identity propagation with your dedicated um, uh, cloud identity service here, where you need to register the applications and everything, which is not so easily done on the default setup, and and this is now also available here on the free tier, which I thought was was really good. I mean, there are obviously these typical 
yeah, here the, this 90 days um, limitations. But if you want to try something out, then I think that's a very easy way now um, to get started here. Um, continuing uh, Volker, the... Volker, yes. just one second. I was sorry on the mute. So yeah. regarding the Go Goran uh, last uh, mention uh, in editor files is in B, uh, last time we shared uh, the also documentation a link to uh, from Stefan Miller about DR scenarios with SAP mm -hmm. Windows application servers with focus on on uh, Azure files with SMB. So it's already there. One article is already there where uh, um, it's being used. someone can just take a look and how to use Azure files with SMB. Ah, perfect. Cool. Yeah. So link, then, link. Uh, you can. I, I already post. Let me get reposted. But it's actually uh, under our last video from okay, last, perfect. last last week. I'll, I'll reference it, it again in 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 the show notes, basically. So quickly continuing with the whole identity and single sign on stuff. So Mark or Kima um, released another blog post. I mean, he's very much focusing, obviously, on the whole Rice story. Yeah, here he had. And published this harmonized single sign on on um, SAP Rise customers with multi cloud environments. Now he's basically continuing the story, um, looking or yeah, looking uh, taking another look at the whole um, identity authentication mechanisms in the context of Rise. So so customers have their Rise um, um, system where, where they obviously have certain boundary conditions. Let's put it like this. And um, Mark outlines all the different ways how you can do single sign on. Um, in this RISE context. So, so obviously using Kerberos, using SAML, using OIDC. So it's a, it's a nice blog post that really outlines the different um, authentication options that you have when you are running um, your SAP systems with RISE from, from SAP, RISE on SAP. Good, and then the last topic that I want to, wanted to highlight is um, with Logic Apps. So we've talked about Logic Apps a few times. Um, we, we also talked about how you can connect to your SAP system from Logic Apps and so on. Um, and um, one of the things that you very often need to do when, when working with Logic Apps is um, mapping different data um, flows, basically. So you get some data format in, you, you have an, an outgoing um, format, and now you need to map the different fields. And, and so far, this was a little complicated because you had to do, you had basically to create your own XSLT transformation. And now there's a nice, uh, there's here, there's a nice um, mapper that you can use in Visual Studio Code. So I think we also talked about using logic apps in Visual Studio Code already. And now you have here the, the integration where you can literally drag and drop um, the mappings um, between your input and output schema, um, where you can do transformations when you, when you do all these kind of mappings. Um, there is a nice um, video by by Kent that really walks you step by step, really how to get started, even some troubleshooting steps in there, um, how to do this um, mapping in Logic Apps. So I think if you are using Logic Apps, this is definitely one of the cool things that a lot of customers have been waiting for. And now you can um, give it a try here in preview. So we're that, waiting then, Olga, for Copilot uh, suggesting new mappings. Yeah? The the automatic mapping there, yeah, exactly, yeah. That, that's definitely one of the next steps, I would say. But you're right. I mean, that's that's it with the news for, for this week. And um, with that, maybe before we go into the topics, I, I know all of you, or I think most of you have been on the show um, before, but uh, maybe to introduce everyone, maybe we can quickly start a round. Um, maybe you are starting with you, then Yossi, then um, um, Sebastian, Martin, just a quick introduction and then We'll hand over to you, Joaf, to to give us a closer view in the news with Sentinel for, for SAP. So thank you, Holger. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a great honor to be here. Uh, so my name is Joaf. I'm from the Sentinel product team. I'm a product management uh, manager in the team. And um, I'm here to give you some news about what we do for business applications. Thank you. Great. Yossi. Hi everyone, uh, great to be here. So I work at the OAV's team. I'm a product manager in Sentinel and I was, I'm still the PM focused on uh, SAP BTP, which I'm going to talk to you about the solution that we created for Sentinel for uh, mm -hmm. SAP BTP. Really cool. Sebastian. Hello again, Sebastian Ulrich, um, cloud solution architect for SAP workloads on Azure. 
And together with Martin, uh, we built a great demo we want to show you today. I mean, everyone knows Martin, but still, quick words about you. Same team uh, as Holger in Azure Core, also a product manager and focusing on the SAP workload uh, at Microsoft across the board, which includes Sentinel. And uh, we presented um, one of the demos that we're going to see last today at the German speaking user group and already incorporated the first feedbacks there. It was a great pleasure to do this with UOF's team and uh, also Sebastian really spanning product development, product management, and also our colleagues in the field talking to the customers. Perfect. Cool, so Joaf, what's new with Sentinel? Okay, let's talk about what's new. We recently also had a, a security event in Microsoft, Microsoft Secure, where we announced a couple of new capabilities for Sentinel overall, but today we'll focus on the SAP related portion. So can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, so the first thing that we announced is the uh, SAP S4 and uh, SAP RISE private edition uh, plus NetWeaver certification for the solution. Uh, it means that the solution was certified by SAP. It's listed on the website and uh, that was important for many of our customers and they can now uh, view our certificate and of course uh, try the, uh, the solution, which is not new to try the solution. We have also introduced business technology platform support, which you also will present, including a demo elaborately. We introduced new content, security content, including uh, data exfiltration rules, uh, the ability to detect if sensitive data is exfiltrated from uh, SAP, uh, and also uh, it works in perfect in perfect harmony with MDE, where we detect in case uh, 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 the data that was exported from SAP was also saved to an external USB drive in addition to detecting just the export uh, activity. And uh, a new workbook, a new dashboard for uh, the security audit log in SAP providing visualization and also cross correlation with uh, a, a risky uh, a users indications from, uh, from Active Directory. We also uh, provide a new way to help the SAP and SOC teams collaborate. I'll speak a little bit about that and what why it's mm -hmm. required, uh, a new uh, playbook, a new response, so our capabilities that uh, Martin uh, will later on show, and uh, also the ability to automatically update our connector ah, yes. agent, so you're always up to date. And I will go quickly over uh, two of the topics. The first one is RISE, so a lot of people ask about RISE. Um, for us, RISE is yet another system that supports RFC, and of course, we're talking about the private edition, and we are acting as a user, uh, as a service user, to retrieve the data from RISE using an API. And uh, uh, for the uh, infrastructure data, it's naturally managed by SAP. SAP manages the RISE infrastructure, exactly. They have access to that subscription. So the value that you get by integrating RISE to Sentinel is first being able to monitor the SAP user activities, the application layer, with all of our out-of-the-box analytics, with our dashboards, and gain visibility to activities like data exfiltration, attempts to create persistency on the system, uh, uh, brute forcing, using uh, uh, um, using users that are break glass users uh, uh, without authority, and and generally hundreds of different uh, alerts that uh, we provide for the applicative layer. You will be able to cross correlate the uh, signals coming from SAP with events coming from the endpoint, from your endpoint security suite, wh whether it is uh, Microsoft or uh, another suite that integrates to uh, Sentinel like uh, CrowdStrike or anyone else. Uh, and of course, correlated also with Active Directory and other data sources. So you will have a stronger uh, confidence or higher level of con confidence uh, uh, to see that, for example, something happened on the endpoint, like a suspicious process was executed there, and then something happened on SAP, somebody created a user, logged into it, uh, exfiltrated data, created a new internet-facing service, and the ability to correlate those activities, which could be benign, together with signals on the endpoint, is a very powerful capability of uh, Sentinel. And of course, uh, you'll be able to use Sentinel to monitor all your SAP systems, including the ones that are on-premise, 
and in other clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say that we support SAP RISE, I mean that we support any SAP RISE, not just SAP RISE on Azure, but also SAP RISE on AWS and, uh, and GCP. And like I said, the infrastructure itself is managed by SAP. It's kind of like a, 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 that's the nature of, of the service itself. Um, uh, what, and, 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 and subject to your uh, agreements with SAP on that part. Um, there is also a, a documentation that, that we provide. So, for example, if you just try to, uh, to bing uh, SAP SAP, uh, Sentinel SAP RISE, uh, then um, you will get to this article, which includes, by the way, everything about integration of RISE to Azure. It's not much different if you do it for another cloud, uh, and it explains exactly how this works. Let's go over the details very, very quickly. So I'm going over all the different services that integrate with RISE, and here you have also Sentinel. It explains everything you need to know about this, and the way it works is that you have a data connector agent that you install on a virtual machine or on a Kubernetes cluster. It's a container, and it needs to have a, an open connection to the SAP RFC port like a user would have. And that's about it. That's about it. And that's how we retrieve the data. And this documentation is available to you with all the details, links to the certificate and everything uh, related to that. That's cool. And Joach, just just to to, to highlight um, one more time. So there's nothing really RISE specific, I would say, but the most important thing is that it is actually really certified. So it is certified by SAP. I mean, um, for the RISE usage. So customers that are already using SAP on RISE, they can just follow the instruction as you as you outlined, and they can really benefit from the Sentinel integration in their SAP system um, hosted on RISE, basically, or managed by by SAP in the RISE context. Yes, exactly. Cool. Okay. Another thing to remember about Sentinel overall is that this is uh, Sentinel is a, a magic uh, a garden, a magic quadrant leader for security. Uh, events, uh, information uh, and events management, SIEM, and uh, this means that a lot of, uh, of, of companies use Sentinel as their main tool for managing the security yeah. operation and using Sentinel to protect SAP at the applicative layer, both addresses a blind spot and provides an harmonic solution together uh, with the existing console that the SOC security operation uh, center already uses. Yeah. Now, when we talk about SAP security, that we, we found out that there are silos in the organization. There is the SAP silo, and there is the SOC uh, silo. SAP is, is, requires a special expertise to operate, to work with, and to secure. And the SOC is, of course, responsible for the security of the entire organization. And there came a need on one hand, to provide visibility for the security team to events happening on SAP and even response for some of the cases. But on the other hand, make sure that SAP team can also be part of uh, the security operation, uh, get uh, uh, the tickets or the incidents escalated to have full access to the data, to the, dash to the dashboards, to everything, and also take part in the process of architecting the detections uh, in case custom detections are needed, something which is unique for your environment, and that's why we introduced a new solution that uh, uh, allow you as part of the deployment of the Sentinel uh, 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 solution for SAP applications to grant the SOC team access to the SAP security data, and the SAP team can see the SAP security data as well, while the rest of the SOC data, like where people are browsing, and other sensitive information that is not directly linked to SAP is visible for the SOC for cross correlation with the SAP uh, data. And there is a documentation link on how to uh, uh, on how to do this. And uh, uh, it's also important to know that we provide playbooks. Martin will show you a little bit of that that allows you to also interact with people who do not access the Sentinel console but may need to take actions. And we provide other simplified ways like emails and Teams chat to allow uh, uh, automated response, ap approval flows, whatever you have in mind for making sure that when there is a security or, uh, incident or a suspicious activity on the system, you can uh, easily respond together with all the relevant people, even if they uh, are not going to be a power user of a Microsoft Sentinel uh, uh, as a thing. Um, 
So that, that's about it in terms of the product updates, the recent things that we have delivered. There is a lot more coming, and that's why we'll have to do this again, Holger. And uh, now I uh, uh, leave the stage for Yoti to show you how cool is our BTP solution and how you can start gaining security handle over uh, your BTP platform. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Yoav. Thank you, Yoav. So uh, I will uh, take over the screen now. Great. So, um, <clears throat> as I said, Yossi, product manager in Sentinel, focused on these applications and in charge of the SAP BTP solution. So, before I'll jump into the demo, I want to just uh, um, go through a few uh, details about the, the solution. So, first of all, it's important to understand what is sub BTP and what is its security risks, uh, and then to understand what we provide. Uh, in the Sentinel solution for SAP and for SAP BTP, and and it's a pretty uh, preliminary solution. We're going to add more and more capabilities in the future. So when we talk about SAP BTP, it is a cloud-based solution that provides those sub developers you uh, capabilities uh, uh, to build, run, and manage applications that integrate with many other uh, data sources, any other uh, uh, sub workloads, and so on. And one of the key features there is the low-code or no-code app development capabilities, which are gaining a lot of traction recently with organizations wanting their citizen developers to develop more and more capabilities on top of their uh, databases and, and business applications. Having said that, uh, giving uncontrolled and unmonitoring usage and creation of apps with sub-ATP does pose security risk, major security risk to organization because as you might uh, imagine, those apps access sensitive business data. They integrate with multiple business applications. They enable key business processes, which are very important to organization. They're also created by those citizen developers that are not security savvy, so they don't understand the risks. And eventually, when the, when the application is published, it's used by wide range of users, internal, external partners, and so on. So the control of the organization on the usage of the um, of the app is, is critical. And when we uh, thought about building the Sentinel solution for, uh, for this, we wanted to provide tight security monitoring and threat detection capabilities by the following things that are you know, basic and, and very uh, um, are in the core of, of Sentinel. First, of course, is a data connector that will ingest all of the sub BTP configuration, security, and activity logs to Sentinel. Then we want to provide an overall activity and identity management visualization by a workbook that is included, included as part of the uh, solution. Workbook is a kind of a dashboard that shows you visually and graphically uh, what is happening, what, what those logs do mean. And last, and actually the most important, are the alerts. So we understood that just flowing, putting logs uh, from BTP and Sentinel is not enough. And what you, what our customers need, are uh, alerts and, and uh, incidents that will trigger when something suspicious or potentially malicious is happening. Today we have five different rules that are included out of the box in the solution, and we're going to add more. Those little rules look at things like uh, mass user deletion in the sub BTP sub account. They look at uh, users that are added to sensitive privilege roles. They're looking at suspicious trust and authorization uh, identity provider changes, failed access attempts to uh, bus business application studio sub accounts, and also even looking at malware that is detected in uh, uh, the sub BTP business application uh, studio. Before I go to the demo, uh, I want to uh, just give you this and we'll, we'll put the links in the uh, video uh, comments uh, about how to onboard and some important resources about that solution. So we do have an announcement blog, a detailed one with a lot of information about how to use and, uh, and deploy uh, the solution. And of course, we have also a detailed solution documentation page under the Sentinel SAP documentation specifically for uh, uh, for BTP. 
So I think with those resources, you can uh, kick off your uh, deployment of the solution. But anyway, we are here uh, to help and, and support. So let's have a look at the demo. And let's start the demo from the Sentinel side. So this is the Sentinel console. If you are still not familiar uh, uh, with that, let's quickly go to the overview. So you see how an overview page uh, uh, looks like of Sentinel. This is a testing workspace specifically for BTP. So for the BTP solution, so we don't see a lot of data, a lot of information here. But the first thing that you do is you go to Content Hub. And Content Hub is the place where we store in Sentinel different uh, uh, solutions and you search for BTP. And then you see here, the solution that I already deployed in my uh, environment. If I hit, if I hit uh, manage, I will see all of the components or the content elements of that uh, solution. So as we discussed, we have a data connector. That's the first uh, element, sub BTP uh, data connector. This one uses currently an Azure function, and we'll go through the details in a moment. Then we have a workbook, the one you see here in the end, sub BTP activity that visualizes the activity of sub BTP. And then we have those five different analytic rules that will go to some of their details in a moment. Okay, it's so just five right now, Yossi, right? But it's very easy to add new ones. Of course. So we are really looking for feedback for all the viewers and uh, the people looking at this um, to um, like, also shape what uh, we should add next and what's most relevant to you. There's like a long list on the SAP side and yeah. uh, we'll be quite curious to hear which ones are uh, the most interesting to you. Yeah, so feel free to reach out to us or even add in the comments under the video here below. Um, okay, so let's talk about how do you start with ingesting logs into Sentinel from SAP BTP. So it's not complex. You go to the data connector, that's what I just click here. You open the connector page and you have most of the instructions here in a moment. Okay, so we have most of the instructions here. Basic steps are creating an Azure Key Vault, or if you have already, already one available, use that one to store some of the, the client secrets that are required to access the Audit Retrieval API. Then so, do some configurations on the SAP uh, BTP cockpit. Actually, let's have a quick look on those configurations right now. I have my trial environment of uh, SAP BTP here. So that's a sub account that I have. It's called trial. It's a trial sub account, of course. And the first most important thing to do is to go to the service marketplace and search for the audit log management service. And of course, create an instance of that audit log management service for my uh, environment already created one. Once this uh, audit log management service is created, if you we'll go to the instances and subscriptions, uh, you will see um, the, uh, the instance here, and you will need to actually create a service key. We will use the details in that service key to uh, build the connection from Sentinel to SAP BTP. In this case, also I already created the service key and all of the credentials uh, are here uh, in the key. Uh, I will not open them because they include my secret uh, credentials, which I prefer not to be seen in a public YouTube video, but it will be very easy for you to see uh, how those uh, uh, keys look like when you open them. Um, then and just we can we can call out again. This is a AWS trial, right? So this also shows already in the demo that this is cross uh, hyperscale environment for Sentinel. Correct. And by the way, another important point: the runtime environment is Cloud Foundry. Um, the solution supports Cloud Foundry runtime environment only. We believe that that's where most of the customers are going to, and that's a trend uh, with SAP BDP usage of Cloud Foundry. Back in Sentinel, so after you actually collect all of those details from the, the keys that we mentioned earlier, the URL, the client ID, client secret, and so on, you go on and deploy an Azure function. You should do those steps for each sub account you have in BTP and for the global account. Therefore, you'll see all of the events from each of your uh, sub accounts and, and from the global account. Once you deploy those uh, this Azure function, and when you deploy it, actually, let's have a quick look. You should use some of the details that let me authenticate quickly. 
some of the details about the keys and secrets that you just collected earlier from the SAP BTP cockpit. You see here, you put, you create your function app name, you add uh, uh, your central workspace name, your key vault name, you get, you put here the secret name, the API host of BTP client ID and the UA URL, and you go ahead and you uh, create the function. The function is running every 15 minutes. So that means that every 15 minutes, you will get all of the logs that were collected, in, uh, that were created in those last 15 minutes in BTP into uh, Sentinel. And you shouldn't forget to also the set, to set the key vault access policy to make sure that um, those Azure functions can uh, access the uh, secret that is in the key vault. It looks complex. Once you do it, it is completed pre pre very quickly. After we're done with the data connectors, then the interesting thing to do is to go to your Sentinel environment and enable the workbook that was deployed. Uh, I already enabled the workbook and we can quickly see the saved workbook. And we see some interesting visualizations that uh, we created. And again, as Martin said, we'll be happy to hear more requirements about additional visualizations that you want to see uh, in this uh, workbook. So here we can see uh, we have two tabs. One is more of an overview one focused on um, uh, the active accounts that are um, uh, generating events, the kind or the different categories of events that are generated. Success, successful user signings uh, over time, activities in uh, business application studio. I didn't have many, uh, so you don't see anyone uh, anything here. And um, what are the alerts that we have? The BTP security alerts over time, uh, some kind of uh, trend about that. The other um, tab is looking at specifically identity management, which is very interesting to many of our customers. It looks at uh, uh, two top user account management events by user user account management events by sub account and so on. Um, so very interesting to see what your users are doing in the sub BTP uh, platform, uh, creating users, deleting, changing and so on. All of those adding a, a role, a security role collections and so on. All of those has a, a lot of impact on your uh, security and you want to see uh, the activities. And of course, the most important thing are the analytic rules. So as I uh, uh, explained, we have five analytic rules out of the box and we can add more. You can customize them and we go. We went through uh, uh, some of them. Um, they are all here in the active rules. I actually activated them. Once you uh, uh, enable the solution, they will be here in the rule templates and you will have to actually go and create rule for each of them that is what i already created and we have five active rules and um, when those active rules will be triggered when activities in sub btp will happen that will cause the triggering of, of those rules we will actually see them in the incidents pane so i already created a few activities that uh, triggered some of those rules just to uh, show you a bit of uh, how it feels and how it looks like. So let's look at an interesting one. So I added a user to a sensitive privilege role collection. And of course I got a, a detection of that. And now the SOC analyst can manage this uh, uh, detection. You can assign it to uh, uh, someone else in the SOC to uh, look at it. You can change the status of the uh, incident, change its severity and so on, get more details about who were, uh, what entities were involved in that and so on. And of course, we can even go further than, than just than just this uh, sidebar and view the full details of this uh, uh, incident, including uh, the full incident timeline, different entities that were involved, similar incidents. We see here that were similar, there were other incidents around BTP and they're categorized as similar incidents here and so on. Um, a few other detections, interesting ones that were uh, triggered are around the mass user deletion in sub accounts. So I actually uh, tried it for myself and created and, and, and deleted uh, a large number of, of, uh, sub account, of users in the sub account and that will trigger the detection, which is an interesting activity to uh, monitor. Identity provider was created. It's a very important one. I actually added ability to uh, um, 
authenticate to to uh, sub ETP using another identity provider, that could be a, good, a, a very a big security risk if uh, someone adds that capability. Uh, and it also triggered an incident, of course. Um, and the one that is also very interesting, the last one that I'm going to cover, is the malware detection in Business App Studio uh, dev space. So the Business App Studio is used to create applications, and if someone uh, uh, uploads uh, in a, a file that is infected mal by malware to this Business App Studio, it means that maybe the app that will be created mm -hmm. based on this will include malware that will be used by a lot of your users and your customers. Uh, so we are actually using a built-in capability in the business application studio that detects malware uh, to uh, float this information to the SOC analysts so they can help uh, uh, those sub BTP uh, uh, admins to be notified about that, make sure that they are not uh, uh, letting those applications uh, be published and so on. I think that that's all with the demo. Thank you. And 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 you. Yossi, I, I I just want to say I, I think this is so amazing what what's happening here because um when when I first had my initial discussions with um Yoav I I don't know how many months or years ago when when um. Sentinel for SAP first came into market, where, where, the, where the first ideas on, on how to protect your SAP system. I always thought it was really great to be able now to correlate the information from the SAP system with all the other uh, information that Sentinel provided, like from Azure Active Directory, from Microsoft 365, from all these different signals where Sentinel can uh, already work with, and then correlate this with the information from SAP. But now, as we know, I think there are very few customers that are using SAP, but they are not using BTP. So I think BTP and and your your classic SAP system goes hand in hand, and especially for Rise customers, for example, and um, we see that BTP is just part of your um, Rise bundle. Basically, you have your SAP system, you have BTP, and now with this extension of Sentinel to not only look into your SAP system and look into Azure and Azure Active Directory and Microsoft 365, but also to be able to see what's happening in BTP. That, that's just absolutely amazing that we now have the possibility to have all this information in one central place where we can run our analytics, where we can run all the um, workbooks and, and trigger alerts from that. So I think that's that's really absolutely amazing what you have done there, and I'm I'm, I'm sure this will be absolutely fascinating for for our customers. Thank thank you, Holger, and and thank you also, Martin, for the help in uh, getting this to uh, reality in a quick time. My pleasure. Huh? That's always uh, what we we'll try to do here huh? in in Azure. Of course. <laughs> and I think um, maybe. That's also a good segue. So we have all now all these information, and now um, what do you do with this information? I mean, yes, you can build some nice dashboards, but you can actually also take some actions out of this. And I think with this, um, over to you, Martin and Sebastian. Exactly. Yeah, that's the the second term. I think you have mentioned it at the beginning. Uh, next to the SIM, the event management, there's also the SOAR, S O A R, the Security Operations Automated Responses. And um, this is really something that um, changed in the, the past years yeah, where you want to uh, offer immediate action. And that's what we're going to see today with the new playbook that um, your office team released. I also like to call out uh, their author uh, who developed this uh, together with me uh, to a large extent. And uh, we had in the past already a blog post on the general idea of using the uh, like the logic app to, to lock SAP users. And there was uh, Amit Lal at that time and Naomi Christ. So they already paved the way um, for getting this into the, to the final product. So let me quickly share from here. So to give you the context on what we're going to see in the demo. So this is actually taken from the workshop that we uh, hosted three weeks ago at the German speaking user group with uh, customers on site. Can you switch? And I think you are in presentation. You are not in presentation mode. Yes, yeah. because I always click do uh first screen <laughs> perfect yeah. so there we go so um we have the classic sap as you said holger now and uh, in the environment we um flagged transaction se80 so that our development um, transaction as sensitive and the the watch lists uh, on sentinel 
looking for this uh, will be triggered once uh, users open this one. And there we go. We already talked about collectors. Here's again uh, a collector to, to ingest the signals. And based on that, Sentinel creates incidents. And if you have an analytic rule for this, which Sebastian will show us in a, in a bit, um, it actually can trigger an Azure Logic App or in the terms that Sentinel uses, a playbook. Um, and from there, we want to take actions. And how we do this in, in the Microsoft world, usually with Teams messages. You can do Outlook as well or whatever other workflow you like, but the playbook uh, ships with um, Teams and, and Outlook. And now imagine you have a, a like group of people who are tasked with SAP security monitoring, and they now have a, like a shared channel where they receive this message. And here you have a screenshot, but you will see it now live uh, shortly afterwards. So you see the Sentinel um, details of that incident, and you get the option to click on buttons and uh, interact with that, inf well, based on that information that you see there. And from there, we make a call via API management and a SOAP service into SAP. Um, for the locking, we have like an uh, like a legacy RFC that is used um, to to do actually perform the action. Um, but we wanted to be able to um, do this in a meaningful way via web services, so we um, added a web service capability to that RFC. So the, com the communication goes through, through the SOAP service. And the final step, um, it informs the SAP user that got locked so that they know what happened because suddenly they don't have access anymore. And uh, it, it closes the incident on Sentinel to really do the feedback loop. So you did something and you tell Sentinel that you locked a user or you flag us at false positive because um, you can have benign alerts. Yeah? And if it's a problem, you should tell Sentinel so that it can learn from the false uh, alert. So we will see this this process moving then in in a bit. So, but first we move over here and have a look at the analytical rule in here. There we go. You want to take over, Sebastian? I just see your screen, your Teams. Yes, because I'm sharing the other one. There we go. Here we have the standard um, analytical rule. We made a copy of it um, for like for the internal demo purposes. So we can have a look at this one. And you can is it, is it just one. me? But I have a really worse um, yeah. picture here. Yeah, no, no, now it's, it's getting better. Yeah. Ah, it's a rendering tool. I, so for, uh, it's good. Uh, uh, first of all, you see um, we have uh, 60, uh, uh, 64 active analytic rules um, based on the workbook we have um, inserted. Um, so uh, we have a template activated, and with this temp template, we all, we got the the analytic rules here. Um, and uh, based on those templates, um, we have uh, done a copy of one of this. Um, a given analytic rule, and uh, you see it on the right side. Um, we renamed it to execution of a sensitive mm -hmm. transaction code um, and did some changes in the analytic rule. So um, if we click on edit, we can really um, configure the analytic rule, how it should act if um, something happens in the SCP system. Um, so on the first um, ov overview page, um, uh, Martin already jumped into the, uh, the rule query. Um, you want this one first. Okay. Can, yes, thank you. Um, you, you can um, have your own name. You have a description. This description, for example, is also um, shown in our adaptive card in, in the Teams. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we did some changes here um, uh, and uh, route this information to the adaptive card in the Teams uh, channel. Um, also, you have the severity, so you can uh, choose um, uh, which, which se severity you want to have if this alert um, will raise, and for sure you can um, select if it's enabled or disabled. So um, 
now we, we have seen um, that this is an enabled rule with the severity high, and now we can have a look into the, the rule itself. And, and here you see um, that we collect um, AU3 out of the, the audit log. So it's the audit log class um, at SAP. And we, we select this one. Um, we just want to have um, production systems. Um, those production systems are uh, in a watch list um, and, and marked as productive. And um, when we scroll down a bit, we see um, what else we have. So um, uh, as, as you see, we, we have a, a timestamp um, where we can say, okay, how, how much time I wanna have, have a look back, um, which system I have and um, yeah, and, and all the things that are coming with the audit log, and I can select here um, what I want to uh, to have. Yeah. And there's a simulation feature, so you can really um, yeah. you either use the blueprints provided by the uh, Sentinel colleagues right away, or really then go down to the every detail that is relevant to you to influence the triage process, maybe have other uh, severities, etc. Sebastian right. Martin, quick question. This Custo query here, did you have to write this or this is the copy? No. This is the template that was provided? Cool. And this now you still have the flexibility to enhance it, to change it, to adapt it. But the um, the most complex thing, so so getting this, this basic layout, that is out of the box provided by Sentinel. Exactly. Fantastic. Otherwise, this would be a huge task. Exactly. But That's it, what it's I was all thinking. done for you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and you it. can use the watch list to really specify it on, on your needs. Um, so we have specified SE80 and, 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 and specified a yeah. user called CSA1, but um, maybe this is not um, uh, valid for, for any customer. So you, you can um, do your changes in this watch lists and then act on, on the information uh, given there. Fantastic. Exactly. And this was just for context. So this is all basic uh, Sentinel for any of the like uh, sources and, and targets, just to have like the mental reference uh, where this is coming from. And uh, the next thing we want to show is over here on the under the automation section in here. Um, you can retrieve all the um, available playbooks. And as of the latest update, there's the playbook that we actually showcased at DSAC and that we are talking about today, and this one. So it's also out of the box uh, provided as um, like a pre-configured playbook. You only have to customize it to your own uh, connections. So you see here it's talking to Sentinel, and um, it has key vault, as we saw before in the diagram, teams to send adaptive cards and uh, Outlook if you want to send emails, and a couple of others required for the function of the functioning of that playbook. So really integrated experience, so to say, yeah, from, from here to get there. And uh, one sentence about it. Um, if uh, the alert rule or the analytic rule will be activated um, with the audit log uh, part we have seen in, in, in the rule, then we automatically uh, trigger this uh, automation here. Uh, we, we won't be waiting for the two and a half minute uh, update cycle today, so we will be triggering it from here. Um, so we, I will just do it from here. But theoretically, you would now go into the SAP system. You would trigger the SE80, for example, which you have yes. on your watch list, basically. Then Sentinel, after a maximum of two and a half minutes, would detect this change, and then it would trigger this flow exactly what you're doing now manually. Exactly. But, but we don't want to wait here, sit yep. on, the, on the video recording and uh, <laughs> wait for this, the, the thing for, for the update to come through. And once this loads here, I will be able to choose the, the run book and um, then it will do the trigger for us. While this opens here, I will quickly go into the logic app. So that you can develop a feeling what type of um, flow you get here. The flow starts with the uh, Sentinel trigger and then with the creation of the adaptive card. And 
then we can see the run going through there. So here, this is now the, the run book that I want to call, the Azure Logic app here. Mm -hmm. And this is now triggering. And then we'll see in here my request. Fresh. There you go, it sees it's running. And we go now to my Teams feed here. And you see now from the time of the recording here, almost 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. in Germany, um, the, the request coming in. And this is the exact title that we had that we nice. saw on Sentinel with all the information coming from there and in a table, the relevant information in the playbook. So for instance, this is the SID, uh, the, the SAP system that was impacted and the account uh, that is associated with the SAP user. So in here, there was actually the Azure AD uh, user and from known to to the account and um, the SAP backend user lock me. And from here, you can now make a decision. Okay, this is rated as high. Is this bad? Should I take action on this? And then you have the option here to either block the 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 account on the SAP backend um, in the ERP or on the BTP or on Azure AD globally with mm -hmm. the intention in mind that if something is really bad, you would maybe choose to lock out that user across the whole board that is locked in integrated with Microsoft. And by doing that on Azure AD, you're probably almost locked out completely. You cannot work anymore. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> and even if you choose a flag as false positive um, with a comment, um, so you see the comment field um, down there, um, this will be um, a flag the incident in Sentinel as um, false positive with the command and the user um, that has um, submitted the answer here. Yeah, this is probably not helpful to train the model, um, mm -hmm. but maybe you give a better explanation why it's not, why it's a false positive. Uh, but we want to lock today. Oh, so we're going to submit it like this. And then you get a response back in here that um, if this worked out uh, with a reply to that message to really have a nice flow for the people interacting on, on SAP. So, and if we try to log in on that with that user, and here, so I probably have it here. There we go. Okay, so I will quickly retrieve the password. So the user lock me is the one user that we we locked now um, in this specific flow. So if you're exactly. trying now to log in with this user lock me, then you should get a response that the user is locked in the SAP system. Exactly. So now I have it here. I will click share again. Okay, you found the password. And now if there. you click on log on, the user, user is locked. locked. Oh. And uh, we, we got uh, feedback from um, when we did this uh, hands on workshop at the general speaking user group that locking is nice, but you should also kill the, the user session. Otherwise, Active sessions are they, the users locked, yes, but they're still in the system and they can continue doing their work. One of the first things that, that we added uh, actually today in, in the flow was um, an additional call to, to the SAP system where there's a, a second BAPI um, RFC exposed um, that actually also kills the user session. Cool. cool. Yep, so so if, that's the whole round basically is really kicked off. Oh, exactly. System yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Exactly. And we, we can do that today. So how are we on timing? Do we want to see how the, the user actually is thrown out? Or is that something we, we uh, save for for another time? If you, you can say? quickly do it. Well, I'll actually, let's let's do this another time because you I guess you need to unlock it to lock it in and, and stuff like that and then run through the whole flow. But I think e even that is what, what we saw already is, is, is pretty cool. So we, we really have this end to end flow using Sentinel basically as the tool that monitors the SAP system and 
we have one alert basically created out of that. And obviously this, this could be extended to information from BTP, information from Microsoft 365 or Azure Active Directory. And then you get the notification in Teams. So there's really an active um, notification to the to the to an admin team, for example, to the SAP basis team. And with one click of a button, the SAP basis team can lock the user and kick the users out of the of the SAP system. So so pretty cool. Or, or lock the user in Azure Active Directory so that uh, the user loses complete access, which is pretty cool. And yeah, and run 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 a transaction is maybe not um, something that a user really. Or, or a customer really uses, but maybe it's the, the deactivation of an audit log yeah. or something else, which is really critical. Um, and then this action can happen and users can be locked um, out of this uh, Teams channel. Perfect. Yeah, cool. and it flows back to center, right? So um, the, the comments that you type in Teams, like looks fishy, is then being added to the, to the incident. Perfect. So, so Sentinel can also learn and, and use this for, for the next iteration. Fantastic. Great. So thank you so much, everyone, um, for the for the updates on Sentinel. I'm I'm sure we'll have you all again on the show. I, I think there are some really cool things happening. And I think it's very clear this value um, that we provide with this integration to SAP. So Again, thank you so much for the for the great demo, for the um, great um, introduction, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again on the show sometimes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.